Good evening. Welcome to the Villager Westmont Committee, the whole meeting for June 2nd, 2011. I'd like to begin by having a quick clerk take the roll call, please. Mayor Ron. I didn't say clerk. <laughs> Mayor Ron. Here. Which we've been known to do. The clerk's here. Trustee Emery. Here. Trustee Fleming. Here. Trustee Clevenow is absent. Trustee Nero. Here. Trustee Scott. Here. Trustee Seneca. Here. Manager Searle. Here. Attorney Zemanek. Here. Economic Development Director and Assistant Manager Kimball. Here. Public Works Director May. Here. Police Chief Mulhern. Here. Acting Finance Director Parker. Here. Fire Chief Trout. Here. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> First item before us this evening are the minutes of the committee, the whole meeting held May 12th and board meeting May 16, 2011. Any corrections to be reported to the clerk? You can tell Trustee Clevin is not here this evening. It's right on my mouth. Moving right along, open forum. <laughs> we have two open forum requests for us this evening. First one is uh, Bob Mueller, 44 West 59th Street, Apartment D, Westmont. How does this guy work? How, how does It'll. It, ah, you'll pick it up. Okay. I don't know how many people ever thought they'd see this in my life t in their lifetime. I sure didn't. <laughs> We're in the second day of civil unions in the state of Illinois. And the Tribune actually picked DuPage County as their example of a civil union license. Every county in the state now issues civil union licenses. They are open to same-sex couples. They're open to heterosexuals. They're basically open to anybody who is not directly related, who is an adult, who is not in a marriage or another civil union. Um, this was a great way to start, you know, June, June uh, Pride Month, 2011. It took a long time to get here. It actually took us 30 years just to get recognized on the uh, non-discrimination law. This only took us four years. The reason it took us only four years, the Illinois Family Institute did a petition drive to try and, and legislate against uh, LGBT families. It backfired. Basically what happened was we all got together and we checked their petitions. We checked them in Chicago, we checked them in Wheaton, we checked them in Champaign, and they were fraudulent. But we didn't stop there because we brought all these diverse groups together and all these diverse groups said, look, we're going to fix the laws of the state of Illinois. This only took us four years. Now, Illinois is still standing. I know Virginia said you can verify Iowa is still standing. They've got equal marriage. It took a long time to get here, you know, but, you know, people say, oh, this is going to destroy marriage. I, I think you're going to find that this is going to strengthen marriage. You guys who are married, you take a lot for, for granted. As we go through the civil union implementation, you're going to find all the things that got affected because you got one license that said marriage license. Now it applies to people of same-sex families, people who've been together for 20, 30 years and never got recognized. I know there's going to be some, some major changes. I don't know what the police chief has, has done so far, but obviously if one of his officers decides to get a civil union, guess what? He, he's going to have to provide them the same, ben you know, their, their partners the same benefits as every officer who got married. If, there's, if there happens to be such a, a tragic accident where, where the officer gets killed, they now get survivor benefits. If you ever read the history of LGBT you know, family struggles, that had been a major court struggle. And many times the partner got turned down for survivor benefits. Once in a while the boards you know, did say, hey, we agree that these people deserve rights. But that was a rare circumstance. 
You can find there's a lot of things that are, are effective. It's, you know, I mean, basically, we can now file a joint st state tax return. Can't do it at the federal level yet, but it's going to happen. Um, the Tribune has a great article. Basically, Vermont started civil unions back in two, the year 2000. In 11 years, one fourth of the population of the U.S. is now covered by some sort of civil union or equal marriage license for same sex couples. That's an amazing history for a civil rights legislation. And, you know, we, we've still got ways to go. But I think Illinois should be proud that uh, yesterday the law took effect, and today people actually got their licenses for. Uh, and they are now recognized as a family. Ye yesterday, people got recognized if they went to Iowa and got married. <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think this has waited long enough that it, three minutes is, is well worth it. You know, but people who got married in Iowa or M Massachusetts uh, went to get a civil union in uh, California or got married in California. If they come to Illinois, they now have a civil union. So. I think we need to applaud ourselves that we got this done, and basically we're, we're still one of the leaders, although not, not the leader in equal rights. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Wish you a lot of happiness. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, from, uh, Barbara Roos, Angel Haven Foundation, 213 East 55th Street. Good evening, my name is Barbara Roos and I am a director of the Angel Haven Foundation. I am here to request a four day yard sale permit to hold our annual benefit sale. Uh, the sale dates are June 16th through June 19th. Uh, the hours will be 9 a.m. till it gets dark or the mosquitoes carry us away. <laughs> The sale will be held at 213 East 55th Street. That's two blocks east of Cass on the south side of 55th in the West Hills Community Church lot. Our sale is based on the fact that we support 170 families in the Appalachian Mountains and we collect items for them all year round. What we do not send down, we put in this sale. Now the items in the sale will not be marked. We just ask that the community comes out and gives a reasonable donation and takes the items home so I don't have to repack them. <laughs> I am also here to ask for any type of helpers from the community that would like to come out and unload boxes and move furniture and things like that. Um, <clears throat> If anybody would like to donate items to us, uh, my phone number is 630-971-1842. Give me a call. We will come out and pick up your items from your homes. The only thing we ask is that they are on the first floor. Upstairs, basements, getting a little too old to do that now. Uh, but we do collect all year round, so this is not strictly for the upcoming sale, but if you have other items throughout the year, keep our number handy and we will come and get it. If you would like to drop anything off, my home address is 405 Lindley. That's two blocks west of Cass on the south side of 55th. Uh, the last item I would like to request is, I do believe there are uh, fees for the tents that we will be putting up. I'm asking if we could have those fees waived and also uh, the fee for the dump truck. I already do have that scheduled, um, but I'd like to ask if that can be waived as well. Sorry, what was the last fee? Fee for the dump truck? Dump truck. Loan and truck. Loan and truck. Yeah. So um, if anybody would like to, like I said, donate, give us a call. We'll come and get your items, and then we hope to see you at our sale because we probably have 50,000 items to put out. You want to give the date again? June 16th through June 19th. Byra, last year the um, uh, pastor and some people wanted to do live music during that and they were in here. 
Do you remember no, that? It wasn't oh, during the do it a different sale. Time. It was a different event. Yeah, it was. Oh, I thought it was during your sale because yeah, if no, they wanted have, to do it, we have way too much going on for that. Okay, <laughs> that has turned out to be a really good venue for you. I'll bet the visibility yes, is wonderful, and the the traffic that we get in there has has been incredible. Yeah, good. So it's working out very well, but, and thanks to the generosity of Pastor Drew, um, every year he says, "Sure, you come on, bring your sale down here. We'll mm -hmm. let you hold it." Great. So. Great. Well, any other questions? I just want to check your phone number, 630-971-1842. Correct. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -mm. Good luck. <clears throat> okay. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Mm -hmm. So we'll add this to the agenda for Monday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, moving right along, um, reports, the mayor. Um, <clears throat> we have on our agenda uh, Kathy Murky, Murphy proclamation. Uh, this was presented um, about a week ago at South School. She was a teacher in District 201 for many, many years, and once uh, South School closed, she completed the rest of her teaching career at Manning School here in, in uh, Westmont. Uh, we had the privilege of having her as a teacher for all three of our children. She was a marvelous teacher and, and con continues to be a marvelous person. So uh, I read the proclamation at the previous meeting, so I'll not be uh, reading that again uh, this evening. The other thing I just wanted to mention that tonight was the first night of cruising night, and I don't know if we had a good turnout. Oh. If anyone was there, were you there? Mm -hmm. A lot of people. A lot, a lot mm -hmm. of good turnout. Good. I know there were a number of people that are looking forward to that. I'm Look glad good. there was a. It didn't rain, but uh, they had a fairly <laughs> decent uh, turnout. There. Uh, people put a lot of time and volunteer effort to make that a success. And tonight was the first night of cruising night for uh, the village for the summer. And that is all that I have right now. Moving right along, our village clerk. Well, first of all, I want to wish the village manager, and he'll turn red, a happy birthday tomorrow. Thank you. So, <laughs> got to get that on. And secondly, I want to congratulate those Lions and JCs and everybody else at that red, white, and barbecue. It was horrible weather for them. Um, Friday night wasn't bad, but then it was just a disaster. We walked the 5K. Some of us ran the 5K. And that wasn't bad. It was foggy, but then the rain started at 10, and it just kept going, and it was horrible. I just feel so bad for them because they worked so hard, and they had good music. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was a good event. I just feel so sad that the weather was so terrible. And then our Memorial Day self ceremony was wonderful. The parade was good, and the ceremony was good, and I thank Frank and um, Ron Gunther for their hard work. It was a nice event, very nice. So that's based, and welcome back. Um, yes, right. welcome back. I am so glad he's back. <laughs> I am so glad. <laughs> that's it? That's it. Okay, next our village attorney, John Semenek. I have nothing tonight, thanks. Thank you, uh, Ron Searle, our manager. Um, thank you, just a request for executive session for personnel. Okay. Uh, trustee items, and for the first time, I'd like to uh, first call on Trustee Nero. <laughs> uh, a couple things. I first off want to say that the Memorial Day uh, celebration was fantastic. Chief Trolley did a great job, as well as the police department. Uh, secondly, I just want to uh, let everybody know that for the first year, Westmont was part of DuPage River Sweep. It was something that I uh, I, I led, we got about six volunteers this year. We cleaned up uh, a little bit of St. Joseph's Creek and I hope next year with uh, a little bit more uh, heads up, we can get some more volunteers and do a uh, little bit more significant impact. That's all I have. Okay, thank Excellent. you. Trustee Scott. Nothing this evening, sir. Thank you, Trustee Fleming. <clears throat> Nothing this evening, thank you. Uh, Trustee Emery. A uh, couple of things. First of all, uh, Trustee Clevino, um emailed me and asked me on her behalf to remind people that there was um, another coyote attack, uh, this time on South Adams, uh, just uh, north of 55th Street, um, against uh, somebody else's dog, and to remind people not to leave their dogs outside, um, especially if they're little. We've had several dogs killed in our neighborhood, too, so. Um, the other thing is that this Saturday 
uh, 6 p.m. for $10 with a donated item, you can get uh, enjoy live music, food, and beer donated by Argus Brewery. Um, all you have to do is bring one item to the um, Morgan Paris Salon on 700 Pasquinelli. They are having a fundraiser to help the Joplin tornado victims. It's 10, it's 10 bucks for that party if you bring one donated item, 15 if you don't. Um, so on their behalf, I'm asking everybody to, um, if you can dig a little deeper for more than one item and dig a little deeper for more than 10 bucks, please do so. Uh, the women at that salon are really um, going all out and, sh and they've got a shipper all lined up to um, ship all the goods down to Joplin where these people have lost everything. So um, I'm extremely pleased that um, throughout the year, my law firm, I collect, uh, when anybody travels, I collect all the to I harangue them to give me all their toiletries from hotels and I usually get about six um, bankers boxes full of them. And so I'm going, and they go to battered women's shelters. So I'm going to bust that up and take a bunch of them up on Saturday. So uh, um, please do what you can and help them out so they can help out the victims in Joplin. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Trustee Seneca. Thank you. Um, actually, I have several things. We've got a lot going on in town. Uh, the Audi grand opening was absolutely phenomenal. It's a beautiful facility. It's great to have them in our town, and they make wonderful contributions via sales tax. They are having one of the best years that they've ever had in their history, so that is really, really fortunate for Westmont, and they did a great job. Also wanted to comment on the barbecue, as Ginny did. Uh, Sunday, I did go up there, even though it was rained out and they were all closed up. Every competitor was there, sitting in the middle, under the tent. I stayed for the presentation of awards. It was phenomenal. There had to be a couple of hundred people there. The competitors were just so thrilled with Westmont. Um, a gentleman from Kraft Foods specifically flew in for this and stayed at Oak Brook Hills. We had a lot of room nights at Oak Brook Hills. It was a great event, and thank you to all that volunteered through the Lions Club. The parade was phenomenal. Um, American Legion member Frank Trout did a phenomenal job, as did Ron Gunter and all of the volunteers that put that together. Uh, tonight, cruising nights, another great night. There's lots of people out there, so there's still time to go. You can always watch this and replay. Why you'd watch it live is a mystery to me, but you might be. Um, also went to Miss Murphy's retirement party, and the mayor talked a little bit about the resolution that uh, we did for her on behalf of all of her wonderful, in recognition of all of her wonderful service to 201. What was really nice was the mayor's daughter, Heidi, read the resolution and um, it, was, it was very, very well done. It was so nice to see so many kids there and so many parents and former students. It was just amazing. Um, Cop on the Top was phenomenal. Thank you, Tom. I know that was very successful. Um, I'm sure I'm leaving something out. I am. The Police Academy, uh, Citizens Police Academy graduation was a few Saturdays ago and I had an opportunity to go to that. That was just incredible. The, the attendees were, were so appreciative of our police department. And I urge anyone that can possibly get into that class, do it. Because I'm telling you, it will give you even more of an appreciation of what these men and women do every single day on our behalf. So it was great. And thank you to the police department for doing such a great job. And that's it. Thank you. Happy birthday, Ron. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah, for your positive up uplifting comments. Oh, it was like, I felt like I was always going to something. It was great. Right. I, nobody else was there. It was like, it's yeah. great. It was fun. Moving right along, new business, Connemara Townhome, 63rd and Connemara. Public improvements, board to consider requests for acceptance of the, for, of the public improvements and final subdivision approval. Do we have anyone here? Connemara. Do you care to uh, okay. come forth? Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm Sarah Hoffman. I'm the 
Good evening. This evening we have Mike Connolly with us um, to request formal approval of the subdivision improvements, which would include detention, um, the curb and gutter, et cetera, all of the engineering requirements really for this subdivision, which I believe began around 2004. Is that? Yes. Um, it's a 26 unit subdivision. We are going to hold a 15% maintenance bond uh, as per our village ordinance, but um, this is really just a matter of course for this point in the project. Any questions or comments? What is the uh, status of sale of the units? Well, they've been all sold for quite They're, some time. They were all sold. Yes. Okay. And how many units was it are there in total? 26 units. Um, took us roughly three or four years to sell. Um, since then, we've been working on the final punch list with the uh, village okay. engineering department. And uh, like to, to get the project approved. It was great to work in the village here. Uh, had really no problems, and everyone was, was very easy to work with. So. Building department and engineering department. It's good to know that. Thank you. We did not ask him to say that. <laughs> I, thank you. It's it's always so refreshing. Every developer that comes before us, every it, it's amazing. We get wonderful compliments on that department, and thank you. You're we agree. We've worked in many different towns in DuPage County, and Westmont is a good town to work in for sure. Westmont is what? A good town to work in for sure. A good town to work in. Oh, did you say a good town to work in? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. If there are any further questions, we appreciate your coming in, and I'll, this will be on our agenda for Monday for consideration. Okay. Thank you. Next item, 433 Plaza, revised site and landscaping plan. Board to consider revised site and landscaping plan approval for an addition in the M Manufacturing District. Hello everyone, my name is Amy Kotecki. I work for Integrated Building Systems. My father is Ron Kotecki, he's the one that owns the property. Uh, he started his business here in uh, Hinsdale in 1970 and when uh, with the business grew, he uh, opened up where we work now in 1977. In 1988, he built a uh, eight tenant building. This is just a part of it actually. Right, right there, and there. In 1988, and uh, immediately, uh, Burkholtz, which is now Westmont Body Works, bought it, uh, is renting uh, most of the units, and one unit is rented by Denver, which is a dental equipment manufacturing company. Uh, as you can see, the uh, we have a detention pond here that is not very pretty and uh, we would like to build over it. And what I have is the plans to build over it and make all the landscaping very pretty. But it'll be, if you look here, this is the existing building right here. And then this would be the addition. Half of it would be on uh, the uh, ground the, the slab would just be on the ground. The other half would actually be the detention pond underneath the main building. We would have all the bathrooms and everything on the main, on the finished floor, the main slab right here, and then the uh, detention would be underneath with uh, an entrance here to be cleaned out by, uh, or it, uh, any uh, people to go in and clean it out, gunk it out, whatever's in there. And uh, it would be, this is the side view right now here is the detention pond right here and then our detention pond would go down to I, th I think it's nine feet and then we wouldn't have this messiness anymore uh, we ha it'll be two tenants right now. Uh, we have one tenant looking at it. Uh, hopefully we'll get uh, a uh, intent from him. And uh, he seems to be very 
very much looking forward to it. And actually, uh, Westmont Body Works is looking at the other unit. So that's what I have for you. So all the detention that's there will be maintained? Yes. Or will it be increased? It'll be maintained. Maintained. Mm hmm Engineering would look at it with a fresh set of eyes to make sure all detention requirements are met. I'm, yeah, I'm concerned with um, in uh, uh, your dad's letter to economic development, he says that due to other locations and the BMW dealership draining into our pond, we've had difficulty maintaining its ability to drain. So if you're going to do underground detention, is there going to be now run off of stuff that would have gone into the pond but now has to go somewhere else and how are you going to, you know, is there going to be a different way to drain the underground detention? Have we confirmed that that's indeed happening? Have the engineers looked at that? I mean, I'd like to first clarify if it's really I'm happening. Honestly, uh, <laughs> and uh, the detention that's there uh, will be maintained, as Amy had said. Uh, we will increase it for the hard surface of the new building, which is criteria that has to be met. Uh, the present detention has a manhole that goes to the west. It doesn't go to public storm. And that detention manhole has a two and a half inch orifice to go in and obviously, uh, with all the leaves and all the trees and everything, that's a constant problem of, of maintenance. Uh, therefore, in the new design, we're going to have access to the underground, and that access will allow us to more easily clean because we won't have the gathering of all the leaves and all that occurs in detentions that are open. So we'll have access, and the fact that we are receiving from BMW their detention, and Lexus has now constructed two new detention ponds to absorb all the flat surface runoff they had. But we'll at least maintain what was coming in, plus the detention volumes of the new construction. And it'll be easier to maintain because of the fact that it'll be out of all the gathering of leaves and all those kinds of things. Go ahead. Steve? To answer your question, uh, they probably don't have a you know hard design done because they're at conceptual approval. It's part of the engineering design process that John mentioned. That is something they would have to figure out. Any site, whether there's, well, any site anywhere, you, you have to account for or accommodate any water that is tributary to your property, you know, existing and proposed. So if there is if something drains into it, they'll have to maintain that, they'll have to figure out how to capture that and redirect it. And uh, similarly, uh, you know, the design, besides having a fresh eyes on it, I mean, it has to be brought up to today's standards. So it's not just the incremental difference for the difference in the building, it would be the, the developed attention for the entire site of which you know, a lot of it is provided in that volume, so that it, it probably will still be equivalent to the incremental change, but if it, this wasn't built to the standards of the current code, it might be, you know, greater than that. So there's, it's a possibility, but it has to be measured. Um, what was the other question? I'll speak to the perforated riser. Yeah, I, how they actually do the release rate, I don't know. I mean, that's something they'll have to design and suggest. This is, you know, never been done. We have a lot of buried detention under parking lots. The, um, you know, when, you know, the cost of the land or the space, uh, you know, becomes more valuable than the, the, the method of construction to bury the detention, these, uh, you know, concepts become more feasible, at least for the owner. But there are no examples of this in town as far as being underneath a building. At least in a parking lot, our concerns were, like we had a long time we were discouraging um, detention that was in, uh, void space like in, in buried aggregate because there, there's no way to inspect it once it's built. So, you know, a concern, even though it's not covered in code, is we, we have no way to inspect it because it's underneath the building. We don't have access. We can't go walk up, you know, in a parking lot, we can walk up and see if it's functioning and, 
you know, can do an inspection. They're, they're, we lose that ability when it's, you know, buried underneath the building unless there's something built into it, you know, so that we have access to it from the outside. So all of this is unknown. There's, there's no examples of, you know, this type of construction in town. So I'm sure it can be accomplished, but it, it's going to be a very uh, unusual review. Mm -hmm. There will be access. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. But also, I mean, our detention are that we make them, you know, they're captured in easements and stuff, and how do you do that when there's a building on it? So, you know, there's a lot of it, new unknown issues here. So we'll just um, have to work through those. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is early on on the concept, so none of this has been figured out. Conceptually, I really like it. Um, aesthetically, it'll really improve the area. That will be nice. And it appears as though there's plenty of parking. That's not an issue. And you have potential tenants. What could be better? So, you know, I hope that it can all come together for you. Trustee, in answer to your questions, too, um, I concur with the uh, uh, public works director, but in a landlocked suburban community like this, I think you're going to see this become more and more commonplace because we're built out. Uh, there just isn't that much green space, and to take maximum advantage of the space that property owners do have available, this is more likely to become a common practice in the future. Uh, it's an unusual process, but it is permitted under our ordinances and the ordinances of DuPage County. So maybe after we work through this one, seeing how it's kind of odd the way it's coming about, then going forward, we'll already have the bugs worked out of this thing, so to speak. This is kind of this is going to be kind of a trial situation, something that hasn't been tackled before. It's kind of nice to have something like that for a change. So I think it's a challenge. Engineers love a challenge. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. That's fine. Makes That's job, fine. your job interesting. <laughs> And the, the only other quick comment on that, given the you know the depth of detention now, you know to, to maintain the volume that they have to do, more than likely this will be mechanically pumped out at a you know at a predetermined rate. Right. Right. Calculated rate. Yeah, I'll be curious to see how this one comes along. Yep. Yep. Any other further questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, big improvement that area. Thank you. Next item, uh, 10 West Burlington, special use permit. Or to consider a special use permit request to operate a resale consignment store in the B1 limited business district. Hello, my name is Adelia Tolke and I'm looking to open up a resale shop across the street over there, across the tracks. Um, I'll be selling or hope to be selling their furniture and home accessories. Um, and that's what I'm hoping to do. There isn't much more to say about that other than not you keep it. Have you, have you been in this type of business at another location before? I currently have a, um, a space at a resale mall in Lyle called the Resale Connection. Okay. Which I am, have a space and I'm doing reasonably well there. And about 19, 18, 19 years ago, my sister and I opened again and again, which we had sold to another person once I became pregnant. And then she ran it for a number of years, and then I don't remember or know exactly what happened to it, but I know it has closed. Um, my goal is to have upscale stuff. I was just going to say, you were down there, you were on Cass, and then you were over here. Right, well, my sister and, and I started it, it was on Cass, yes. Uh -huh. But then, as I said. So would it be a similar type of business as what you once had? Um, I've learned a lot since then. What I would have would be, I think, a lot better than what I had then. Mm. How so? Um, then I was taking consignment and you know, really didn't know what I was doing. It was kind of my first experience. Now, after 18, 19 years of doing this on the side or selling at, at consignment shops myself, I've fixed up furniture. I know what I'm looking for. It's not just a take in anything anymore. It's a take in what's good. So you'll be taking primarily furniture? Furniture and household accessories, you know, things to make the house look nice, like, you know, decor. pillows and decor and... But not like toasters and no. vases and it's more... Home accessories. Home accessories. Yeah, no toasters, no microwave ovens, no... Jewelry, clothing? Um, 
I'll probably do some jewelry, but no clothing. I've never figured out clothing. Mm -hmm. So it would strictly be home accessories. Mm -hmm. um, not much in the way of toys. I'm not much into plastic, okay. so it would be. With OK, I'm, I'm just going to cut to the chase here, because um, the type of store that you had before was not one that would normally appeal to me. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't care for that kind of con well, consignment. She changed it. It was more. But I love the idea of home accessories, furniture. We had one similarly down there. Right. Um, so you know, along those lines, I think that there's really a market for it. I do. I just wouldn't want to see it turn into the typical old time re resale shop that you see in some neighborhoods. No, I'm not interested in that sort of thing. I don't want. I guess I'll call it junk. I don't want junk. <laughs> well, I wasn't calling it junk. <laughs> but um, no, I don't want, I don't know, things with broken legs or <laughs> yeah, yeah, anything like that. Um, I don't want it at all to look like like a Salvation Army, which has its place. They have right, tons of exactly. And that's stuff like that's that, but that's exactly not, what I was getting at. I, you know, I, I would not wouldn't want to see that. a store where you walk in and you know there's CDs on that table and there's you know a phonograph on that table that they're trying. To, you know what I mean? No. It sounds like it's going to be very similar to what my green attic was, and, and that would be nice. A nice addition while mm -hmm. it while it was there. Yeah. Right. Which is what and the I board want to do. recently approved a definition of resale consignment shops, which requires them to be upscale and the type of merchandise that can be sold, <laughs> so that they don't turn into Goodwill, Salvation yeah. Army type, anything under the sun uh, type stores. It's pretty restrictive, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. It sounds like it could be a really nice fit. And I'm starting small, and I hope to expand. So how will? You'll you'll get your merchandise. How how will you market that you're looking for this? You know that you're looking for a dining room set or or something to or whatever it is. I go to estate sales and I go to garage sales. So you'll be buying and reselling more yes. than taking on consignment. I at least to start with, do not believe I will be taking consignment. I want to have complete control over what's in what there. your inventory is. Right. I don't hmm. want people coming in saying, "Well, it's a really nice piece," and I'm looking at it going. Really? Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. yes. So no, I don't want to do that. And also, I have more control on pricing. I mean, people think their piece is worth tons of money, and I may mm -hmm. look at it and say, you know, it's really only worth ten, and then I've just offended them. Excellent. So I want to avoid that sort of thing as well. This way, I have control over everything. Will you be sort of a Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday? What kind of hours are you looking at? Um, Tentatively thinking of Tuesday through Saturday mm -hmm. and have Sunday and Monday off. Um, tentatively opening at 11 and closing at 5 or 6, but I'm going to like play with the hours because I have to see what hours See where your market best. is. Yeah. Right. I mean, if I need to be there to 7 because people are getting off the train to shop, I may need to be there. Yeah. And then, of course, there's you know whatever events Westmont is holding. I want to be out there for that so that people see me. And, so, you know, Thursday nights I'd be open late, at least during so. cruising nights. <laughs> <laughs> Got that down. Will you be considering joining our Chamber of Commerce and being yes. active in the community? Yes. Great. Yes. And since you uh, live in Westmont, I'm pleased to see that you decided to keep your business in Westmont, too. So I grew up in Westmont. I went to Westmont High School. <laughs> my daughter be goes better. to Westmont High School. What could be better? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's close to my house. I don't have to travel far. Yep. It's like Good. I found the road, and I like not traveling far with furniture. Okay. It's just easier to get it to where it's going. Excellent. Thanks. Very good. Any other further questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. This will be on our agenda for consideration on Monday. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, 102 South Cass, development permit. Board to consider a development permit request from B. Moe's Boutique to open a women's clothing store at 102 South Cass in the B1 Limited Business District. Good evening. Yes. Hi, I'm Bridget Murray, um, owner and operator of Bridget Murray Clothing um, at 5902 West Madison, and I'm looking to open a shop at 102 South Cass with uh, women's clothing. Okay. And what type of 
you tell us a little bit about the type of business you were um, I sell in Africa? Some of the specifics and the type of... Dresses, um, tops, jeans, for women clothing. Women's clothing? Yes. Strictly women's clothing? Strictly women's clothing. Okay. So will you have buyers that yes. will travel yes. around and, I mean, is there any particular label that you like to? Um, well, own? we sell now, we sell David and David, um, Zahar, not just your daughter's jeans, um, not just Bell your Delaney. Daughter's jeans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is this going to be where the printer was and the cleaner? Take that whole No, just there? the printer. Just where the printer yes. was? Okay. On the corner there. Which the building, by the way, is really starting to look nice. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you. And just how long have you been in business? I've been in business since December of 2007. Okay. At the location where I'm presently. And you're going to keep both locations open? Yes. Okay. Will you be marketing to a particular age group or type of client, or will it be, you know, if you're a college student, you might be able to find something if you're... Um, I, I believe from the age of 18 up until my age. Okay, so... 18 to 25. <laughs> 27, actually. <laughs> yeah, and of course you'll join our Chamber of Commerce, Yes, I most certainly will. <laughs> and be active in the community. Yes. That would be great. I think that's going to be a good location. I believe so. You know, we're Richard very optimistic about it. To, yeah. Yeah. What kind of hours are you looking at? I'm looking from uh, 12 to 6. 12 to 6 Monday through Saturday. And it depends on um, what's going on inside of Westmont. Like there's an event out there now where there's um, Gores, Westmont Gores, and, mm -hmm. you know, tourists out there. So. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there's the church across the street where there's events where um, it would be the Bible study or, you know, so I have to find the hours of what's going on in the community in order to really nail the hours. But I'm looking for 12 to 6 for Monday through Saturday. How many employees will you have at the West Mile? Um, myself and one assistant. It's a relatively small unit. It's like about 900 square feet. So we won't have um, a lot of inventory. There's no basement inventory. You know, it won't be overstocked. So I, I believe myself and the assistant would be just fine there. Will it be clothing and accessories or primarily um, clothing? Some jewelry, maybe some jewelry. Um, Headbands, you know, just a little jewelry, maybe headbands and earrings or something. Sounds good. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? <clears throat> Thank you for coming in, and we'll be on our agenda for consideration on Monday. Thank you. And I apologize for being late, but Detroit had us kind of tied down back there. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, next item, 128 South Gas Development Permit. Uh, Board of Consider Development Permit request from Harris's Bait and Tackle to open a sporting goods store at 128 South Cass in the B1 Limited Business District. Good evening. Uh, my name is Rosalind Harris, and this is my husband, Roger Harris. Um, we're requesting to open up Harris Bait and Tackle, which would be a fisherman's shop. Uh, what we call it the fisherman spot. Um, there we will be selling fishing equipment, rods, reels. We will have live bait and also package bait. I'm doing women and um, male accessories. Um, I did want to have um, like lessons for children during the summertime to teach just the beginning, something basic for them to do. And uh, we will be licensed to, to sell the fishing license and hunting license. Um, the vendors, well, the distributors that we'll be working with is American Rod and Gun and Marvell's, yeah, Marvell's um, Wholesale distribu Distributors. And they are working with us hand on hand to set up the store so that everything is done. All bait, all live bait will be set at a, its particular temperature. Um, it will be maintained with proper ventilation and um, 
and cleaning it. We will clean it every day to maintain, to make sure that there's no smell or anything. Um, there's no uh, dead um, baits of fish or anything laying around. Um, also, we will have refrigeration to store some of the live bait because when my husband's out fishing, I will not be touching any worms. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> we will have four employees. That's me. what we're, our goal is to have four employees. So right now, it would just be my husband and myself. And we will have one maintenance man who will be trained to clean, um, clean the different tanks that we will have. And I want to have one sales associate. Um, you said you might be doing some training, you know, like of kids that want to learn how to fish or whatever, we'd be doing like fly fishing and tying flies, teaching them things like that? Um, well, I wanted to check into um, just the, like about from 9 to 12 for the kids to come out on 55th and um, where is it? Like 55th, there's a pond there where they have that big. In Downers Grove? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I wanted to um, check that area or someplace out here in Westmont to get a clearance, but we wanted to have make sure that it was safe you know, safe there. I am a certified teacher, and um, my husband has a passion for fishing, so we just thought about combining the love that we have for children. We, we are a coach, and I'm administrator for Judah Travelers Basketball League. We travel all over the world with different state competitions and things like that, so just to see the kids laugh. I mean, they, they might not go nowhere from this, but to give them something to do, that's what we wanted to. I don't know if community. any of our ponds, I can't think of a pond that allows fishing. Does I think Twin Charles? Lakes does, right by the softball fields. It's private, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would look into the park district, a Twin Lakes pond, which is... Do they allow it? Yeah, they do allow it. I've never caught anything there, so maybe with your expertise okay. we could. Yeah, uh, they did either. I know they have fishing derbies there, but... Yeah, yeah but I there's quite a few ponds them. around that, cool. that allows fishing. And um, my husband and his friends, they go out... And they just hit every pond. Four o'clock in the morning, I'm looking, where is he at? He's coming back. He's either muddy or wet or, you know, got this fish and that fish. I'm like, okay, I guess we have fish tonight. <laughs> so. Sounds good. Where's the closest place to fish in, uh, in the West Mine area? Or, you know, in uh, I fished on 55th and Fairview. Okay. Fished on um, Clarendon Hills. Oh, over there, fished yeah. Fished Wilmot. Oh, they do a lot of fishing there. Fished yeah. in, uh, what is yeah, it? Maze Lake Village, right even, behind too. behind our house. <laughs> yeah, so you sneak on the golf courses, they got good. Lamont yeah. Yeah. Cemetery. Yeah, Lamont Sorry Forest. if I called the cops on you if you were fishing in our pond, because I always Because we don't allow it in our pond, and we do call the police when we see people fishing there. But. but I think it would be a great asset to the community. I've talked to so many of my neighbors, and the travel that they have to go through. Even my husband was talking about he has to go all the way to Kmart. Kmart and Walmart, well, Kmart to get his fishing license and just to have that here in the community where, no, you know, fishing is done all year round and it's loved by many people of all ages. Oh, yeah, there's so ice to, And I've checked and I was like, there's nothing like that in this community, you know, and we need something like that here to bring a change. So you, you will have fly fishing equipment as well as rod and reel? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Fly fishing is, there's more action involved than, yes. <laughs> well, and especially because people that even that they go out to uh, Shabana or they go to the, up to the um, chain, up to the chain or on the, um, uh, the power plant, you know, stuff down in LaSalle County, it'll be nice. They can pick up their bait and everything, mm -hmm. not have to, you know, how, how will you, how they get out there? I just, out of concern, I'm, I'm going to ask this question. How will you compete with Bass Pro that's like 15 minutes from here? We and will, how will you market to draw people to your store? And how will you be competitive with your pricing? I'm, I'm really curious on that because I think that's going to be a tough hurdle for you. Well, actually, I've associated us with Bass Pros. Ah. Um, I'm still checking into different things as far as what they're offering and um, trying to offer something similar but a little bit different. As far as the lessons, they have just one. Um, it's, it's like for a weekend. It's a free event, but the kids come out just for the weekend. And it's a limited space. So I thought about something else where the kids can come out, the parents can participate. Um, 
you know, and just make it into like a, a camp. In order for us to have a camp where we don't have to go through the different different steps of the certification of it, we can do something three days a week or two days a week, you know, for the kids to come out and have fun. And um, as far as Bass Pros, that's where I got a lot of the vendors and everything. So they're they're working. They're way out in Bolingbrook. So to go way out to Bolingbrook, when you can just come to your hometown, it's and of you know, course you'll it, be joining the Chamber itself. of Commerce. Oh yes, oh, I yes. will. Yes, so, I will. <laughs> lots of marketing opportunities there. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm so excited. I'm just. I know this would be really good for the community. The products that you sell, are they going to be similar to the ones at Bass Pro, the, at uh, you know, somewhere you can go get fishing supplies? Or are these like uh, from American Rod and Guns and Pro Bass, are they unique to, to you? Are they exclusive to the area? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there will be something similar to Bass Pros. Some, some of the products will be. We're looking, my husband's actually putting some things together too, and we're hoping that we will get something patent under. Harris Bait and Tackle also, mm -hmm. they will come from here, so. Right, yeah, Getting good. different ideas and just kind of nitpicking from this person and that person and I'm taking it all in. So whatever someone comes to me to say, well, I think you, I think this, and say, oh, okay. So then they have that here where they don't have to go far, but yeah, we have some of the products too. Good. I think it's a unique idea. That's pretty yeah, neat. Yeah, thank you. You're right. I can't think of one in, 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 in a close vicinity at all that I've ever even heard of. So it's unique. Right. It's something new, and I think there's potential for it. So it's exciting. Thank you. Thank you. I, thank you. You know, I, th I think if it's even a concern, and I, and I don't know, maybe that's too strong a word. I think the only thing that I'm wondering about is this live bait thing. Um, I don't know how many weeks or months or days you can keep live bait or how quickly you have to turn it over, number one, but that's not my problem. It would really be yours. But I, you know, I just don't want to see you get into a, a situation where you've got every neighborhood kid running in and out of your store just to look at the bait, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but it'd be, <laughs> um, I am a little concerned about the live bait, and I know you said there wouldn't be any odor and, you know, but. But one thing we noticed, we will not have um, no one will not be allowed to be in the back area of. So that would not be in the front where anybody could see. Right, it. it'd just be mainly the store would be in the front as far as the okay. accessories, so the rods, a... and everything, and then the bait will be closed. It's when you go into the um, the unit, it's real. It's a big area, and then you have two doors on each side. At first, my initial thought was to have the customers come in one way, employees come the other way, and my husband would be back there showing them the live bait. But um, in talking with Marvell, the distributor, they said it would be best to keep that area closed off, mm -hmm. and just but the employees would go back there to pick, just in case you know we have to. So the live things. bait will be things like earthworms yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> types of fish like, like, like minnows like and things. Wigglers, crickets, crickets, okay. uh, bass minnows, crappie minnows, and um, what's that one? Okay. Um, Crawdads, soft shell and hard shell. Yeah. Okay. Leeches. Yeah, leeches. I yeah. forgot about those. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is it has Some to be kept wrong. covered anyway in a refrigerator, so it's mm -hmm. you know it's not like going to be a bug yeah. fest in there. Yeah, we would have it in styrofoam containers. Mm -hmm. um, some that's already made up. Um, they would not send you us. won't put it on a sidewalk sale. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm teasing. Our only concern I'm teasing. is the crickets right now. That's <laughs> like, oh, okay. You know. I think it sounds like a neat concept. And even thought about putting like a little. Um, just a little fake fountain, something where the kids, when they're waiting with their parents or something, where they can try to catch a fake fish, you know, a magnet fish, and I'll give them a little lure or a pencil or something. Well, you know, well something. I will share something with you. When I was walking in the 5K over the weekend, a resident approached me and said that they looked at the agenda, saw this on there, and they made it a point to tell me, you know, this is exactly what Westmont needs. Um, he's a fisherman, Amen. Amen. so he was so excited about it. Amen. So I'm sure he's watching tonight. So. Amen. Amen. But well, we look forward to meeting you. <laughs> My husband will be there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Any other uh, questions from board members? Okay. Sounds like a very interesting uh, yeah. new concept. Sure does. And Thank you. we will 
uh, give it some consideration and you'll be on our agenda Monday evening. Thank okay, you. thank you so thank much. You. Have a blessed evening. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Next item, Comprehensive Plan Advisory Committee appointments. Board to consider the appointment of individuals comprising the steering committee for the creation of a new village comprehensive plan. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the board may recall that we've recently entered into a contract with the firm of House Seal Levine to rewrite the comprehensive plan for the village of Westmont. And at the mayor's request, we have contacted the following 11 individuals. The, the list is uh, on the dais for the uh, village board tonight. And we're pleased to report that uh, staff has contacted uh, all 11 and all but one. Uh, Mr. Forrest Chen has, has uh, agreed to serve if ratified by the village board. Mr. Chen is the uh, executive director of the uh, Chinese Cultural Center, and he wanted to do a little checking with his board of directors to make sure that his service in this volunteer capacity would be uh, meet with their approval. That's good. It's a great list. Yeah. It's a great list. Fred, can you just talk a little bit um, about how you envision their role? Well, this will serve as the steering committee, and this is actually the, the recommendation of the firm of House Seal Levine, that we have a good cross-section of the community to, to help give some oversight to the process and, and to steer and, and govern, uh, not govern, but uh, kind of direct the efforts of the comprehensive planners. So uh, it, with the board's permission, uh, Your Honor, I'd like to kind of read through that list. Uh, Mr. Greg Pill of no. Westmont, uh, a member of the uh, Westmont Planning and Zoning Commission and also a member of our Economic Development Committee. Uh, former Village Board Member, Mr. Mark Forsley. Uh, Westmont Chamber of Commerce Executive Director, Larry Forsberg. Uh, who's this next guy here? Trustee Bob Scott. Uh, hmm. uh, Kim Heller, who is a uh, local real estate agent. Mr. Chester Gottwald, who is a uh, resident of the south side of the community and also owns property in the downtown B1 district. Mr. Don Boringer is the uh, former member of the Westmont uh, Environmental Improvement Task Force. Uh, Ms. Violet Hawkins at 8 West Burlington, a, a stockbroker who uh, owns her business here in, in Westmont. Uh, Mr. Chen is, is uh, considering the matter. Mr. Jack Todd, uh, a 661 Newport, and I'm, Mayor, I'm not familiar with Mr. Todd or his background, but uh, sounded to be a very uh, intelligent and eager man on the telephone. They've been residents of uh, the village of Westmont almost as long as uh, Nancy and Roger Westman. They're one of the first wow. homeowners up in the uh, Oakwood subdivision, uh, upstanding members of the community for many, many years, very supportive of, of the direction that the uh, village has, uh, has moved over the years. And then last but certainly not least, Mr. Mike Frigo, the executive director of Mays Lake Village. We thought it would be a good idea to have kind of a, an advocate representative for the senior community there. And so, so Mike uh, in, informed us that he would be willing to uh, serve in this capacity if so approved by the village board. But we think it's a, an exemplary list and staff uh, it really looks forward to working with them in the, uh, the kind of the oversight of the uh, comprehensive plan creation. Yeah, looks like a well-rounded group. Okay. Very good. good. Any good. questions? Mm -mm. Thank you. Fred. Next item: 500 North Cat zoning code variance. Board to consider variance re a variance to permit more than three antennas on the cellular tower at the police department. Good evening again. The item before you right now um, came to our attention when we were going through the process of consolidating our dispatch services with Downers Grove um, that we had more antennas on the property at the police department than our zoning ordinance actually permits. So we went through the process of um, auditing the number. We determined that there are 10 where code allows three. So the variance we're inflicting on ourselves, our own variance process, um, in order to make this improvement to facilitate the improved um, connectiv connectivity for the dispatch uh, program that just, I believe, this week went into effect with Downers Grove. So um, again, it's 11 antennas, an addition of one for a total of 11 where three are permitted by code. Okay, I would suggest that perhaps we add a day to cop on the top. <laughs> that is now a two-day event. And then perhaps the torch run, we could add three miles to that. Is that fair punishment, Tom? <laughs> well, I think is, one event for each antenna. Uh, there we <laughs> go. The now, three. is this, are these going to be, since these are uh, police and fire, are these whips as opposed to, like, the um, cell antennas? What, what kind of antennas are they? They're mounted. Um, 
the technical term is on arrays, and I don't believe they're the WIP structure that you're mentioning. Some are. Some are small square microwave, and I believe mm -hmm. there's a larger, rounder microwave as well. Um, that's what's going with down this grill. Most of them are the WIP antennas or the okay. pole type antennas, but there are smaller square ones, which you see similar on other buildings, uh, public works, but I know there's a larger, rounder one for the microwave. As well. Okay, so what's the total that we're, we're putting on there now? We're adding one. Okay. There are 10 currently. Oh, okay. So when Tom talks about all the different kinds, it's not like there's, you know, 10 more going on. Right, just the one. Okay. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? Comments? Thank you. Hi, Dad. 2008 CMAC Agreement Amendment Number 1. For to consider approval of an amendment to the original IDOT local agency agreement that was approved April 20th, 2009. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the the CMAC is the is the name of the funding source. So this project is the um, uh, a grant funded project. This is an amendment. You've actually already approved the agreement. Uh, in, in fact, it's already gone out to bid. Uh, and that's the reason for the amendment. When the first agreement was first uh, adopted or approved, I uh, back up a little bit. The because it's a federal uh, grant funding, the contract, the contract, the contract, all aspects of the contract and the engineering services agreement are all administered by the Illinois Department of Transportation. So when we first did the local agency agreement with IDOT uh, back in 2009. Uh, that was based on the engineer's estimate for the costs of the project. Now that it's gone out to bid, we have the exact costs, and because it's an 80-20 um, split, the, the actual numbers are plugged into the agreement. So it's the same agreement. The amendment is just putting in the actual as-bid dollar amounts. But they do require it before they'll award the contract to the contractor. So when we first saw this, were we going on your probable cost figure? Correct. Okay. The, the <clears throat> engineer's estimate of probable cost, right? Good. So it came in under rather than the other way. Yeah, and, the, and this just besides, I mean, it's called a sidewalk project, but this also includes part of what's been. Um, these all take long when they're funded this way, but this is also includes the uh, 60th Street culvert, uh, mm -hmm. so the, the the closed road for the last. And a half and yeah, that uh, Trustee Seneca and I keep fielding questions about, yeah. and now Trustee Nero, I think you get okay. so many every yeah, day somebody's calling in. So with your approval on Monday, I actually I believe the pre-construction meeting is scheduled for uh, about a week and a half, so we're ready to get started. Okay, good. good. That's, That's good. good news. I received a comment from several residents who like the fact that it's blocked off. Yes. Some do. Much yeah. more private. <laughs> Keep it that way. I win them all. I hear both sides. So. <laughs> yeah, some people do like it. The kids really like it. Too. Any other comments on that item? Don't move, Steve. <laughs> South pressure adjusting station reconstruction contract. Or to consider a bid award to Mark Presmery Construction LLC for the South Pressure Adjusting Station PAS reconstruction. Uh, this uh, is the award of the bid. The, the pressure adjusting station is, is the, we maintain a pressure adjusting station at each of the two points in town where we receive water from uh, DuPage Water Commission, so our, our, our drinking water source. And there are, both our facilities are underground. This project, uh, in short, is to build the above ground uh, structure over the facility. And uh, the engineering's already been done that went out to bid. Th these are the results of the bid, and you're awarding that tonight. And it, we, we have a certain amount of time to award the bid. I understand it, it's still in the budget documents as far as, um, you, you know, the, as presented to date. So we are committing to an award prior to that. Okay. We won't be spending any funds before that, but we want to award the bid and get the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, commit to it. Um, I, I guess then the ordinance should say subject to the, the, that the bid is awarded and the contract's authorized consistent with the bid document subject to um, financing through the uh, 
the budget process? I don't know how that would work. We have um, a, a certain amount of times where we're obligated to award the bid to the contractor or actually our other recourse is to reject all the bids and go out the bid again after budget approval. I don't, from a contractor's point of view, they, they just want a signed contract. So you'd award the bid, but then you have time to approve the contract or, or get that signed off on, assuming it's in the budget? I, I suppose we could. We, we can, you know, you, you can phrase it as you feel most comfortable doing, and we can take our time, you know, transmitting the, uh, you know, actual documents for signature and executing them. So I suppose you could authorize us to, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure what our, I guess you would have to tell me, you know, what our obligation is to the contractor a little bitter well if something is not appropriated for I believe the village has the ability to get out of a contract that where there's no appropriation for it uh, legally without uh, repercussion so I don't know that we need to say anything in the ordinance um, but if you can delay the actual contract signing until you've got budget blessing I guess that would be preferred that I, I we can do We'll just do it until they block, and then, but then we'll just explain the alternative is, is we can reject it. Do you yeah. have caller ID? Sure. Okay. It works. Um, this is what I was looking at. I flipped the wrong page for the, the uh, pre-bid opinion of probable cost that it came in way lower. You must have thought I was smoking something when I talked about it for the last item. But no, this came way, into, way under what you thought it was going to be. Yeah, there were good prices, and the uh, the Baxter and Women, the engineers, got good familiarity with that, uh, with the low bidder too, and they right. uh, indicated we would be very pleased with their performance. Questions? Hmm. Steve, at the uh, South Water Station, where does that line originate? Does that run up and down about 83? Where does the how does the water get over? The, the oh, one of our access points is on 83 up in the Pasconelli area. Right. The one from the south actually comes down Cass Avenue. I know at least from 75th Street, so it, it probably is interconnected somewhere near 75th and 83. Um, I, I can get you a map of the okay. network. So I'm then sure. it would come north. Does it come north on uh, Cass then? It comes north on Cass Avenue. Uh, uh, okay. And just to service us at our south end. Yeah, yeah. okay. I'd be curious to see that too. Very good. Okay. Okay, thank you, Steve. Next then, Village Board Committee's board to discuss Section 2-33 of the Village Code regarding Village Board Committees. Um, this item uh, was placed on the agenda at the request of Trustee Emery. Uh, I hope I interpreted her email accurately when I uh, tried to outline the aspects of um, uh, the things that wanted to be that she wanted to discuss. Um, in your packet is a uh, excerpt uh, of the code, so you can see the actual language that exists, uh, the committee names that currently exist, um, and the process involved with it. Uh, also tonight, I passed out, I had circulated a, um, a form to each trustee and asked them to rank order their preference of the committees. And based on seniority, I uh, passed out a, uh, a matrix that shows the um, how that um, selection process worked out. Um, the top part is the actual ranking by the individual trustees and then the bottom section shows you the chair and co-chair for each of the committees. Um, I did have to, um, once I got through the trustees uh, first assignment, I did have to go back to the most senior trustee and start over to fill a couple of positions. So that's why there are some, a uh, couple of trustees that are on multiple committees. I am. Um as far as the public information committee, I mean, we have six trustees and seven committees, and um, the public information committee, Larry McIntyre does all the work for that committee, and he does it well, and a trustee sort of just hosts that committee, and I think that um, we should make Larry the chair of that committee and accordingly um, switch Trustee Nero to the chair of code enforcement. But um, 
because Larry does so much work for that, I think it's appropriate that he be the chair and that we don't need it to be a trustee committee because we don't use it for deciding policies and and over um, you know prelim of it's things more informational that we, than anything. It is. Um, so I, actually, I I I would agree with that, but um, I you know with Steve Nero being the, our newest trustee. My take on it is it's more critical for him to work through the individual departments and committees because that's going to give him a well-rounded operation of our village. I mean, Lee and I have been here long enough to where we've been on all those committees. Ellen's been on one or two. Steve, you've been on a lot. Um, but I, I think it's important that Steve get through some of those committees. The other thing that I'm a little bit, I was thinking about this a lot today. I think they should be rotated every two years. I think um, more than two years on a specific committee is just too long. It's, it's just too long. It, um, I, I just think we need to rotate through and get, keep, keep fresh ideas and fresh um, interaction with all of our department heads. That's you know my take. Now, granted, committees aren't really decision making; they're more of a liaison to kind of bring stuff back to the board. Um, sort of a sounding board it doesn't really. We don't really take any action, so they're really kind of more communication than anything. But I I think that more than two years on a specific committee is just too long. Um, I really believe that. I have always operated on the premise that, and I served on almost all the committees over over a period of time but the as you're saying the one of the big reasons is to get an idea of what's going on in all different areas of the village you're not just sitting on one committee but you're getting an opportunity to be exposed to what is going on in all the different departments and uh, the village as a whole and in in that in in that respect um, i too feel that there should be a, a system in place and to be decided by this board where where the trustees do rotate through the different committees and they can't just choose because of their seniorities the one committee they want to be on and stay on it forever as long and, as and, on and the board. I think it's good for the department heads to have diff interaction not with the same people year after year after right, year right. but to work with all of us you know well, it's a development tool for us and for them well I think um, the um, almost all of us go to all the committee meetings except for um, one of the reasons that I asked this beyond here economic development being at 9 a.m. precludes those of us who are not uh, um, able to be here if we have a job that we can't uh, go to a 9 a.m. meeting and economic is de economic development is an important committee so I want that to be just like the other committee meetings which is in the evening um, but we're all familiar with the department heads. We all go to all these committee meetings. And as far as the chairs, I'll give you, for instance, for public works, I mean, Lee's background in um, building background and um, heavy equipment background and things like that, I think, make him the obvious choice to chair it because then he knows what he'd like to see on an agenda and all of that. Um, the reason that I had ranked public safety for myself, even though I chaired it before, um, I work with police and fire departments every day and I get a lot of the, um, because of the various memberships, get a lot of the information that other trustees don't and work very closely with the chiefs to come up with the agenda. This doesn't mean that everybody else is, has no interaction. Oh, I, I'm not, I agree. Those points are all very well taken. But, but I think as the chair, it's the chair, and you just said it, they work with the department head to come up with the agenda. It's not about, I mean, if the same people do things over and over, that really narrows the margin for other trustees to have that experience and, quite honestly, to learn about those departments. The, I mean, Lee could know about building, and God bless him, he does, and you know your stuff. But nobody knows more than the people sitting in that back row right there. None of us. And I really would like to see us rotate that a little more just to give everyone that experience of, you know, working on the agenda, you know, planning, you know, the date, 
coming up with the ideas, how is it going to be presented to the board? Um, you know, I mean, there's no decision making in at any of these levels. Um, consensus, certainly, but it's never the final word. I think it's just a great growth opportunity for everybody, and I'd like to see everybody have the opportunity to, to rotate through two years at a time. Well, I think... If, if you're going to... Okay, if you're going to rotate at a two-year term, then the way it... The way I think it should operate, then, is whoever is chair of that particular committee step back to be the co-chair. To maybe be the co-chair. Have someone else move up. To, so you've got somebody in experience you've kind of. You've got somebody still sitting yeah. there that understands because you might be in the middle of, I mean, public works is a perfect example, or building and zoning. You get in the middle of a project that's ongoing that may take longer mm -hmm. than that period of time, and you're wrapped up in it. Yeah, I, I think All that could sudden, easily you, work. You know. I think that makes perfect you sense. Make, you make a change. But and this uh, this current schedule, I mean, there's only one that's the, the same chair. It's it's around. It's all what we looked at from our preferences. And um, so you had all, it seemed like you changed it every two years after an election anyway, every two years. So if we keep this, it's going to be another election. There'll be another, you know. But elections thing. have a way of rotating things also. Right. Right. Because right. you have new people coming in and you have people leaving. Right. So that and, automatically you know, kind of rotates some people out right. of it. Right, right. But I, I like the idea of, okay, so now the chair goes to the co-chair. Co and that person kind of, you know, pinch hits if the chair can't be there. And, you know, that, I, 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 I don't have any problem with that. I just think more than two years as a chair is just too right. long. And I, I think what we need to do, we need to figure out how the rotation would go into play. Mm -hmm. can, can we ask a question? Because you made a, a good point. It's, they're the experts back they there? They are truly the experts. I'm, I'm going to throw some of our department heads underneath the bus right now. And, uh, How unusual. Ask them for their opinion if it's for working with a new person coming in. I understand they're rotating on what Sue says. Or is there a rapport built with a committee chairman? Or do you not care? Or Yeah. Or would you just rather we didn't Steve? have committees and you came to the... Or would you rather not answer the question? We don't even have to have committees. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you'll be next. Yeah. I, I, would, I can honestly say there's no concern with uh, either way. Uh, the, the one point that was brought up is the committee meetings work the best when the, most of you are in attendance anyway. So you all participate in the actual committee meeting. You know, in my case, you know, Trustee Fleming, he participates in the agenda and, you know, there is interaction outside of the committee meeting. I keep him informed of uh, other things or stuff I want to introduce at a you know a public works committee meeting, but that doesn't mean that, that can't be done with anybody. So I'm sure the, any system can be worked with. I mean, there's any given time that I, I, the majority of us sitting here also are going to hand off to that particular individual what's going on. I mean, granted, you you know what the agenda is, you know what some of the items are, and it's kind of nice to get updates on what's going on from those particular departments. Uh, I mean, perfect example, I mean, Steve and I talked the other day when we had a lot of the heavy rain, and I asked him, I said, okay, how are different areas in town faring? But on? that's just normal. We all I mean, if, have I questions. Mean, it's things yeah. like that. But if, if you're going to rotate it, I, I really think that coming up with a way to come up with a system that if you're the chair, you go to the co-chair. I like that. But you're going to have to figure out where that rotation is going to go as far as into the next chair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In two years. In two years. So, I mean, that's that's the way you would have to figure yeah, it out. I, I think it could easily a, be done. With a reasonable way to rotate the positions. I think it could be done. We could do, we could come up with a proposal for Monday night for you to look yeah, at. Yeah, I like that idea. I'm assuming then we will amend the ordinance to remove the Public Information Committee as a standing committee. Um, or it could be, I don't know if that would fall in the classification of a special committee that's already. But here, I mean. Right, I mean, the thing is, I mean, Larry, you know, Larry McIntyre. Oh, he's a genius. He does it all. He's, okay, I mean, he's, he's the public relations liaison for the village, okay? And it's a case of just turn Larry loose and let him do his thing. Give the whole yeah. thing to the WSEC. Oh, I mean, that's. Let well, that be their committee. Well. 
they can't do. Mm, no, they can't. no, you can't do that. Safety committee stuff. It has no. to be. No, no, no. The public, public information, information, which is just what's I mean, not safety. Public. What's going on in town? Which most of it they're not doing really, anyway. It's not really can't give part of their, their uh, mission, uh, and, and the I guess committee. what what the committee has been trying to do for some time is to bring the groups together to, right. to exchange information. The village wanted interaction with that so that we would be able to pull that information into some of our informational vehicles. And that was the original concept. And that's well, how it kind of grew away from a traditional committee uh, structure. Well, Ginny's going to kill me for this one, but she was always the co-chair of economic development. And I noticed she's out of this rotation altogether. So perhaps we give her a committee. Um, and maybe it's public information. Sorry, Jenny, but I think you should be on something because you always have been. <laughs> I'd be happy to work with Larry. You could work with anybody. You're great. I mean, I guess the question is whether or not we need to have that as a standing committee. I think that's the question. Or we put a different. As to whether or not public, you know, yeah. with, you know, it used to be. It wasn't public relations when I had it. It was, it was more public information and IT attached to it. When I had the chair of it and Steve Fidesco had the co-chair of it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, was, it was kind of a different, that's when we had a communications committee mm -hmm. that met. Right. We had you know, several different things that fed into that. Right. And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. it went to this whole other Reading the Cattle calendar. This, uh, this. I, you know um, what? Can I, I interrupt like it for one second? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kimball stepped to the plate. Can he answer the question that was asked? Oh, that's true. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I, I uh, stand before you speaking both as a former elected official and a current village administrator. And I would uh, tell you that I think both elected officials and village department heads would benefit by having a rotational arrangement where they would have the opportunity to interact with and learn from and uh, impart knowledge to uh, different elected officials over a period of time, I think. I think both entities would benefit from that. Thank you. Just quickly, one more thing before I lose it. Um, I've already lost it. For the public information, I think one of the good things about that is I, I view it almost as a public service because we give a venue to all of our service organizations, anybody that wants to be a part of that, to come in and interact. So I, I, don't, I don't think it would be wise to disband it. And yes, yeah, some of it is just reading the calendar, but no, it's no, also not. getting the information out there. And if you're not, you know, if you guys are doing it on this day, maybe we don't do it on that day. You know, I think it's a good communication. It's not. It, it's not disbanding it. It would still. No, it would no. Still, it would still stay. They would have their meetings like they. No, no. But do. someone said, "Do we want to just disband it?" And I'm saying no. We yeah. just. It, no, not no, no, no. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to imply yeah. disbanding it. What no, I was no. suggesting was the removing of it as a board committee. As a board yeah, committee. move it, a, re, take it off as a board committee. Right. Keep and it, you know. Keep it, keep it in its same functioning right. form. You know, let Larry the meetings mm -hmm. and just say, "Hey, Larry, here you go." Yeah, like, okay. I kind of like the uh, idea. Well, of and he pretty much does clerk, it anyway. Clerk involved. Yeah, exactly. She wants to volunteer. Excellent. Only to get that information back to us. Right. Yeah. Whatever they discuss, and, and they do, they discuss things before we ever hear about it. And she's right here, and she can communicate that back yeah. to us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if everyone doesn't want it as a regular committee, board committee, I, you know, if, if uh, Kirk Simpson is going sort of be to a take liaison. On that responsibility, yeah, I'm, I'm I don't have I'd be more than happy that. to do that, more okay. than happy. So, I mean, would that be something maybe to consider in the future, that depending on how things go or whatever, that maybe... Um, that the clerk would take that particular position going forward? Well, uh, what, I, what I think I'm hearing is, you know, we'll come back Monday with some change language in the ordinance and we'll so have a different can, section kind of, where we talk kind of, about kind of that schedule committee, the appointment, uh, we'll give you a rotation schedule. Um, the committee structures evolved over the years. Um, when it first started, um, those chair and co-chair positions seem to mean more because not all the trustees and board members would come to each of the committee meetings. So that's something that, you know, last couple of boards, you guys have been much more active in, in, in trying to be uh, involved in what the different committees are doing. So uh, we'll, we'll come back with some revised 
ordinance language for you to look at them one I day. I, and I think the other thing is, uh, with the more involvement we have in attending yeah. oh. all of the okay. different committee meetings is, yeah, you, you get a lot of stuff done within the committee meeting, which then shortens the time at the committee of the whole meeting because you've gone over all of the intricate things that you need to go through there. So when it does come here, it doesn't get protracted out into a long, drawn-out process. Yep. So that's that's one of the niceties of it. But I mean, I don't. I mean, I'm I'm just asking. I mean, my thought of going from chair sliding to co-chair mm -hmm. and then moving around. I mean, is that something that makes that, sense? I can live with it. Oh, and it could easily be okay it could be done. That. Ron can figure anything out. So yeah, what, he'll do what it. You're going uh, to put Steve where? Oh, did you volunteer? But yeah, code I'm code enforcement. Back. I'll come back with a, code a enforcement. revised list. Are you going to flip with Pat hmm? then on building and zoning because you've been public works for? Well, Ron's just going to redo the list based I on. Redo the list. But, I'm going to remove yeah. that committee out. Redo right. the list based on the preferences and come back with a list for you on Monday. Mm -hmm. And I know I, I know uh, Steve's probably jealous because he did such a wonderful job of scheduling all the committees for the calendar and I I did this on my own without consulting you I hope you're not upset okay Ron, could you I can use review my process my matrix for <laughs> different colors for Monday maybe you want different colors yeah good question Preference. shake it up a little different colors it is <laughs> um, on the agenda and I, I I don't know if it's correct but a discussion of meeting frequency and time and you alluded to that with the Economic Development Committee. Would you like anything specific added to the ordinance on that subject? I, I uh, agree with that. How, I mean, well, answer the question, on? and then I have a point on that. I think you make yeah, a good I mean, point. Yeah, I mean, I think they should be in the evenings. And I'd like to see. they're all important committees, every and, one of them. But some of them I'd like to see during the day simply because whenever we can work it out, and I realize it can't be all the time, I mean, but you might have a vacation day, or you might, you know, there might be a way of doing it. We keep staff here too many hours in the day, <clears throat> and anytime we can move that time up or do something to work with them a little bit better, I think we need to give them that Well, we could, I don't have a problem moving them, moving the time Not up, every time. so you don't have I mean. to hang, up, uh, hang around, but 9 a.m. is, you know. No, but I mean I, even like 4.30 or 5 or something. No, I understand get them, that. That's get them out I'm at saying. a reasonable time. Up, but don't but do I, it I in. think going to the staff issue, the majority of the staff time that's involved is mainly our salaried employees. Uh, one of the things that Steve has made a point of doing now is to get the information that he needs from his personnel and then gives them the choice if they would like to attend the committee meeting, that's fine, but it's not mandatory. Right, so, right. I but mean, it is mandatory for him, and it's time know, out of his personal time away from his family, and we do that to our department heads on a regular basis. I understand, and it's time out of our personal lives, too. But so, that's the... Chief Trout, did you wish that's to... That's the agreement we made. ...comment to the subject <gasps> yeah, I at can't hand. let an open door like this happen. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to tell Go us ahead, everything you've Step right on through, our Chief. Frank, remember, you're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the hook? Who's got the hook? The FCC fine is 25000 so we don't have a five-second delay. Go ahead. Uh, as I have said to uh, Ron Searle over the last um, few months, it would be nice to have a champion for the fire department. I'd like to have some trustee really interested in what we're doing. Um, I was just talking with Steve uh, about his relationship uh, with his trustee, and they said, and he, Steve told me that um, Trustee Fleming, <laughs> Trustee and Fleming <laughs> and him have, they communicate a lot. And they're able to uh, resolve a lot of different issues, a lot of communication going on. And so whoever that person may be, who's uh, uh, the chair of the co-chair, I'd like to see someone actually take a real interest in, in the fire department. Exactly. It's and more so, than just the police department. And, and, and just like I hope you, you know, take interest in other departments, but I would really like to see that happen. We have an organization that you probably don't even know how we put it all together. And maybe shame on me for not putting out more information to you, but it's a lot of movement, a lot of different people, a lot of people filling in wearing two and three different hats at a time in order to do the great job that the department does do. But a lot of people are just totally unaware of that. But whoever may do it, uh, uh, 
and be involved with the fire department. You know, maybe uh, there's take two on committees. that uh, personal interest with it. Yeah, maybe something we even want to consider at another time is to have a committee for fire and a committee for police. Just whatever you want to. Maybe but, not. Uh, in, all know. I'm saying is that if you're going to do it, show some interest in it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Oh, he wants equal time. I, I don't blame him. <laughs> You, you know, <laughs> you know, it's amazing. We can't have one without the other, can we? Short, Good. short, short comments, please. Good. Yes, yes, sir. Short. Um, I would just like to say, I, 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 as department heads, it's our job to uh, get the uh, public safety committee chairs or all the chairs the information they need. And I was going to say the same thing Ron had said. Lately, at more of the meetings, I've gone to public works, I've gone to the other meetings, and you see most of the board at those meetings, and it's actually a board meeting. Um, and the, rather than a committee meeting. And I want to say as a department head, I thank you for that. And that's what I would like to see continue because at those meetings, we get everyone's opinion. We're not having to go back and seek opinions. We get everything needed. It's a one-stop shop. We get everything we need. And uh, my chairs have been very um, uh, supportive of both the police and fire department uh, as far as I've seen in our meetings. Uh, it's up to us to teach um, the committee chairs exactly what we need, what we want, and to be our champion, to be our voice. And, and that's been successful not only in my committee, but in all the committees that I've seen. That's all I had to say. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, as we're talking a little bit in the peanut gallery back there, we kind of wanted to make a suggestion. Uh, we will, of course, accept whatever direction the, the board decides upon, but we'd like to suggest that perhaps the EDC is a little different animal than some of the other board committees that we've talked about. It has about, what, 15 or 18, Ginny, uh, other members of the community that are there to kind of be as a sounding board for conceptual ideas for development. It's not truly a board committee in the same sense that a public works committee or a code enforcement is. Just wanted the board to maybe take that into consideration in your deliberations, that it's a, it's a little, little bit different, sort of more a, a community committee, um, broad cross-representational uh, basis of the community and, and to see what their thoughts are about certain types of, of development ideas and concepts. What are your thoughts about whether to have the meetings during the day or in the evening? Well, th that's a difficult thing because right now many of the, the committee members are people that favor the, you know, the, the 9 a.m. meetings. Now, certainly I, I think the, the uh, suggestion that was made some time ago is that perhaps on a quarterly basis we rotate those and make those in the evening hours so that other board members can attend. Uh, we could certainly uh, you know, talk with some of the other EDC members to see what percentage of those other community members might be available to meet at a, a, you know, a 6 or a 7 o'clock in the evening meeting. And we'd be happy to do that and bring that information back to the board if that would be helpful. Okay. Just a thought. We haven't heard from you at all, Spencer. Do you have anything? <laughs> I don't really have a strong preference. I think like Steve May said, that we're happy to work with the board in whatever way you'd like to do it. We are happy to be of assistance and to serve you in any way that we can. That is a ditto. Pretty much. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to come up and take any additional podium time when it had already Steve been said mentor. even better than I could say it. Thank you. <laughs> sounds to me, it, sounds to me, it sounds to me like Public Works Director May is kind of leading that group back there. Yeah. He's the chair of the He's committee, the chair. Chair. of the He's department the heads. Of the, heads. <laughs> of the peanut gallery. But he doesn't realize he's going to be rotated next week. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't know that yet, does he? There you go. <laughs> Hey, Manager Searle has I direction on how to proceed with this. Uh, I think so. Put the information uh, together for Monday evening. And Monday's, you know, the, the ordinance then, you're, you're going to be seeing the revisions for the first time. So since there's, is there great urgency to pass this on Monday? Um, no. If it gets no. tabled, but we'll do the best. I'll work with Ron to get something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think we could. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It'll still out operate, still happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're just not going to be the chair. I want to know if I should publish it tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Next item, finance ordinance number three. Wave the reading. Press the wave the reading. You're a little slow on that. <laughs> Purchase orders. Um, we forgot one thing before Trustee Forsley left for him to appoint Trustee Seneca as the... Uh, official purchase order 
Oh, no, yeah. Trustee Scott. No, it goes with the chair. Scott. It's Trustee Scott. Goes with the Congratulations. Chair. Thank you. Oh, that goes with the chair. There's an ordinance somewhere on that. <laughs> okay. If not, we can make one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, for Monday, just so we know who's going to. Uh... Remind me, will you? <laughs> I, I do have a question on purchase orders, real quick. Um, what is 12, or a fair share of 37 officers? What is that? I just want to understand what that means. That's how they um, bill us as part of the DUMAG organization. It's a, oh, for, it's okay, a, so that's how they're billing Based us. on the number of officers, I believe. I don't yes, know what the rate is. We're billed is. by officers. I don't know the exact amount, but every year we have to give them our number of officers. So, so we pay our fair share or... I think so it's, it's based on head count? Yes, right. ma'am. So if we were at a full 44, it would be a higher amount that we'd yes, be paying exactly. them, obviously. Yes, exactly. That's why we budgeted uh, over 20000 because we we're budgeting at forty. Um, but right now we're currently at 37, and Dumeg said do not budget at what you're proposed going to be, budget at what you're actually at. Great. Thank you. Um, Ron and the Mead Electric Company, are they the ones that replace street lights that are burned out? Yes, sir. Um, I would just like to mention that I think we have burned out street lights around the village. We have street lights that go on and off infrequently that are starting to get bad. I reported one of those in my neighborhood a while back, but I've been doing that for quite a while. But our public works and staff, they cannot see all of this. If any of the residents see a street light that is out or, is or flashing intermittently, you have to report it because staff cannot catch all those things. Thanks. If we want to have our streets and town safe as possible, we've got to keep keep all those street lights going. Yeah, I know. And I'm sure if you travel around this village, you'll see where 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 they're out. And it just it just a uh, it's just something that we should all be aware of and report when we see it. And our public works director is like that in getting it repaired. We had um, one out in our subdivision for a really, really long time, and I know it took several calls to ComEd before they, before they fixed it. The other thing we do in our subdivision that wouldn't be a bad idea for people to consider doing in any part of town is we leave our outdoor lights on at night. So our neighborhood is very well lit, you know, with garage lights on and porch lights, you know. You know, the residents can help in this effort, I think, in keeping things lit up. But, yeah, they need to tell us. We're, yeah, we I do have, uh, uh, through the website, there is the Citizen Support Center where you can go online 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and right. if you happen to have internet access, that's a real easy way to make those kind of reports. And, you know, I think there are some areas of the village that are inadequately lighted, <laughs> and it's a great idea to, for people to keep their porch light on. Or in my situation, I've got a yard uh, post light out in the yard. Always keep it on. I think that's another safety factor that we should all practice. And it's not very costly. You can put a fluorescent bulb in there, but hey, let's do, let's do everything we can to keep things as safe as possible. It's a different world, and you can't walk you have down to my survive street. Anymore. Oh, leave our Jimmy Street's the darkest street. <laughs> <I'm smart Lincoln's. laughs> okay. Uh, anything <laughs> further on purchase orders? Uh, Moving right along, uh, executive session, unless there's something else to be discussed, the manager has requested an executive session regarding personnel. Motion to adjourn. Executive session. Go into executive session. Motion to adjourn. Motion to go into executive session. We have a second. Trustee Emery. Yes. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Fleming. Yes. Trustee Seneca. Yes. Trustee Scott. Yes. Thank you. We are adjourned to executive session.